Are you harming the environment by using peat moss? A lot of potting mix contains peat moss. Is that killing bogs? These are common beliefs, but they're really not true. You don't have to stop using peat moss. Now, you may want to limit your use, but you don't have to stop using it altogether, and you don't have to feel guilty about using it. In this program, I'm going to look at the environmental impact of using peat moss in horticulture. What harm does it really cause? Do we have a big global problem and we should stop using it? What about the alternatives? Is there a good replacement? Maybe we should be using it. You might know that in the UK, they've recently banned the use of peat moss in horticulture. It seems like this is a real issue and we should do something about it. And there are lots of claims that it's a big issue. But the truth is, it's really not. So let's have a look at the real facts here. Before we get started, let's sort out the terminology. Peat is dead vegetation. Where plant vegetation accumulates in an anaerobic condition, and that's usually caused by water being there. Water keeps the air out. Rather than decomposing, the material just accumulates. And over years, we get layer over layer over layer, and we can build up quite deep areas. That's called peat. The area where these accumulate are called bogs or muskag or mires, and collectively we call these the peatlands. Now in Canada, we have peatlands, but they're made mostly of sphagnum moss. And when the peat is made from sphagnum moss, we tend to call it peat moss. And I think peat moss is a more common term in horticulture, whereas the more general term is peat. So they're essentially all the same thing, although there are different types of peat. To understand this story, we have to look at how peat is used. Now, you and I are interested in horticulture, but peat is used in a lot of different ways. Historically, peat was used for heating. In fact, if we look at the UK... The Romans invaded the UK in something like 46 AD and were there till 400 AD. And during that time, they harvested peat, dried it out, and then used it for heating. In fact, about eight years ago, I went to Ireland, and one of the things I was really curious to see were these peat harvesting areas, and finally found some out in the country. So people basically go out into the wild area and harvest their own peat. And they cut it into bricks. They stack the bricks up to dry. And then once they're dry, they bring them home and they burn them. In fact, if you drive through the towns, you can smell the burning peat as a quite a characteristic smell. If we look at bogs, the loss of bogs is mostly due to draining of the area, the removal of the water, and then using that land for other things. Some is used for forestry, a lot is used for agriculture, and some of it is used for building homes. If we look at the peat that's used every year, it breaks down something like this. Agriculture uses 51%, forestry 26%. Another 22% is used in the tropics. Heating and horticulture account for one percent. It's a small sliver of the amount of peat that's used each year. And out of that one percent, about half of it is used for heating and half for horticulture. So the loss of peat for horticulture amounts to one half percent. That's really important to understand. What that means is that if we stop using all the peat for horticulture, find some other substitute, we will have very little impact on the loss of bogs and wetland. Horticulture is a very minor problem here. How much peat do we have in the world? And are we running out of it? If we have a look at the world's peatlands, it breaks down to something like this. Africa has 6 million hectares of peatland. Now, a hectare is 2.5 acres. So Africa has 6 hectares or 15 acres. Asia has 33 million hectares or 82 million acres. Europe, including Russia, has 87 million hectares 
for 218 million acres. In North America, we have 135 million hectares or 338 million acres. And South America has 87 million hectares or 218 million acres. As you can see, we have lots and lots of peatland. This idea that we're using it all up and there's very little left is incorrect. Now, a lot of these stories do come from the UK. And in the UK, bogs and peat has been harvested for a very long period of time. A lot of the bogs have been drained. And so people know that in the UK, a lot of the peatlands have been lost. And that's true. But on a global basis, it's not true. So how much peatland do we have? Well, if we have a look at Canada, Canada has 111 million hectares of peatland. So that's only part of the story because that measures the surface area. It doesn't measure the depth. And what happens with these peatlands is they accumulate over time. Think of a valley. And in the bottom of that valley, you have a lake. Vegetation starts accumulating in that lake. And over time, the water is used up by the vegetation. It starts drying up and we have a bog. Now over the next millions of years, more vegetation gathers and collects and builds up layer by layer by layer. And what happens is that valley starts filling up with peat. And so we have some areas that have very deep peat deposits. So to understand how much peat we have, we really have to look at the total amount. Here are the countries that have the most peat. Canada has 720 million metric tons of peat. Russia has 1,000. Finland has 6,000 million metric tons of peat. And the little country of Belarus, it has 2,500 million metric tons. There's enough peat in Belarus to supply all of Europe's horticultural needs for thousands of years. The bottom line is that we're not running out of peat moss. We have huge reserves of this material. So some people claim that we have peat moss around, but we're abusing it. We're using up all these lands for other things. So we should ask the question, are peat lands harvested too much? There are 400 million hectares of peat lands on Earth. 86% are completely undisturbed. Of the 14% that has been disturbed, horticulture accounts for less than 1% of that. Forestry and agriculture remain the main reasons peatlands are disturbed. Canada is a major producer of peat moss, and it exports globally. The peatlands represent 90% of the wetlands in Canada, and cover 113 million hectares. Of Canada's peatlands, only 0.02% is currently being harvested. To put this into perspective, the area of Canada's peatlands would cover the area of California three times over. The area that has been harvested fits within Fresno city limits. Now these peatlands aren't static. They're growing every year. Granted, their growth is slow, but when you have such large areas growing, it accumulates fairly quickly. Let's take Canada as an example. Every year, 20 million tons of new peat moss grows, and out of that, we use 1 million ton. So Canada is harvesting 1 20th of the new peat moss. In effect, it isn't touching any of the reserves whatsoever. We are just using 1 20th of the newly grown peat moss for horticulture. Canada is a major exporter of peat moss, particularly in North America, and we're having very little impact on our reserves. In fact, the reserves are growing much faster than we're harvesting them. Now, when people think about harvesting peat, they think about going into an area and just destroying the bog, destroying the landscape. And that's not really what happens. Now, I haven't researched how peat is mined globally everywhere, but in Canada, we have a very sustainable method of harvesting. When we need a new field for collecting peat, it's identified, and then the surface is removed and that can be quite damaging. All the plants and trees that are growing in there are taken away. 
the living peat moss that's growing there is actually preserved. I'll get back to that in a second. Now we have a flat field of peat. The area is drained, but it's not drained the way we drain it for farmland, where we try to get rid of all the water. These peat farms only drain it a small amount because they want to keep most of it wet. That water is preserving the peat. It's keeping it from decomposing. And decomposed peat moss is kind of useless. So the industry has to maintain that water level. We only drain the top couple inches. We then let it dry. We rototill it. And we take off a couple inches. The following year, the same process is carried out again. It's drained a little bit. We harvest a couple inches. And this goes on for years. The same field can be used for 10 to 50 years, depending on the thickness of peat. Once the field is determined to be finished and we want to stop harvesting in that location, we bring back live sphagnum peat moss and, in essence, replant it on the old peat base. What that means is that it starts growing very quickly. These bogs are returned to a natural state within 5 to 20 years after we stop harvesting. Now, it does take many years for the peat to regrow, but we have an active ecosystem where the plants are returned, the animals and birds return, trees start growing. The ecosystem is not destroyed. It's simply delayed for those 10 to 50 years while we're harvesting peat. And remember, we're harvesting 1 20th of the new peat that grows every year. So when people say, well, you shouldn't harvest peat because it takes millions of years to regrow, well, that statement's not entirely correct. Now, it is true that it takes a long time to regrow several feet of peat, but the actual bog is returned quite quickly. Is peat a renewable resource? Now, a lot of people claim that it's not because it just takes too long to regrow. But look at it from this perspective. If we have more peat at the end of the year than we had at the beginning of the year, even though we've harvested some, is that not a renewable resource? In fact, most countries now label it as a slow renewable resource. That's the official label. And I think that's a pretty good label. It does grow slowly, but it is renewable. One problem with harvesting peat is that it does contribute to global warming. That peat is very stable, and it contains a lot of carbon. So we've sequestered that carbon in the ground. When we come along and harvest peat moss and put it in our pots and plant things in it, that peat moss starts to decompose. And as it decomposes, it produces CO2, and that contributes to global warming. So that is an issue that gardeners should be aware of. But that production of CO2 happens no matter what we use in the pot, provided it's an organic material. So a lot of the alternative choices to peat moss have exactly the same problem. So what about alternatives? Why haven't we switched to something else? Well, we've looked at a number of different alternatives. Uh, one of the more popular ones is core. Uh, that's coconut husk that's been shredded and turned into something that looks like peat moss. Uh, we can use decomposed wood, so wood products, waste wood that's decomposed, composted, until it reaches a stage that it can be used. People have tried to use various paper products. My understanding is that in the UK, uh, the decomposed wood has become very popular. But when science looks at all these alternatives, what they find is that none of them work as well as peat. Peat moss is still the best thing for growing plants. Now, one of the most popular alternatives is core, the coconut husk. And people think, well, coconut husk is a waste product, so we might as well use it. It has no environmental impact because it's a waste product. But that is a very common mistake. Just because a product is a waste product doesn't mean it's environmentally friendly. In the case of core, most of that is produced in India and Sri Lanka, and the process of making it harms the environment. It's a very dusty process. It harms the employees. It requires a lot of fresh water to wash the salt out of the coconut. And then we have to ship it around the world. Is the use of core better for the environment? 
Well, it turns out that two of them, peat moss and coir, have about the same impact on the environment. So the best choice probably depends on where you live. So in Australia, that's close to where it's being made, it may make more sense to use that than shipping peat moss from Europe or from Canada. If you're in North America, it makes no sense shipping it in from India when we have a huge peat reserve right here in Canada. So I think it depends where you live and where the material comes from. So what does all this mean? Well, as gardeners, we should be aware of the fact that harvesting peat does contribute to CO2 production. That leads to global warming. However, everything we do contributes to global warming. Simply driving your car, global warming. Playing golf for the afternoon also contributes to global warming. And in fact, environmentally, it's worse than using a bit of peat moss to grow some plants. As humans, we have hobbies and other activities we want to do, and they all contribute to global warming. I think Using peat moss is probably one of the best options because at least we're growing plants, which reduce CO2 in the air. If you want to help the environment, stop driving so much. Don't fly on your vacations. Stop buying so much stuff. That stuff we buy has a huge impact on the environment. But it's important that we're aware of it. So I think that using peat moss in pots and containers is fine. It's a relatively small amount of material. Using it in containers outside is okay too because they tend to be small. Now, filling your raised bed with peat moss is not a good idea. There are much better options for that. Using peat moss in your garden to improve the soil is probably not a good use either because, A, first of all, it's fairly expensive. Second of all, there are better options like compost and manure. So use peat moss sparingly. It's fine for your container plants. It's fine for house plants. Don't feel guilty about using peat moss. The use of peat moss in horticulture has very, very little impact on our peat reserves or on the bogs. If we want to save the bogs, let's stop making farmland. Let's stop building on it. Horticulture has virtually no impact. When you see people online making the comment, that you shouldn't use peat moss because it harms the environment, it harms the bogs, here's what I want you to do. Give them the link to this video. We have to have people start understanding the facts about peat moss. Now, if you'd like to learn about the details about core and how environmentally friendly it is, have a look at this video here. And if you want to learn about peat moss alternatives, I've written a blog post about that and you can get to it right here. Happy gardening.